Is um, dating today, in your opinion, harder than it's ever been? I was friends with my boyfriend before we started dating and I feel like that's a more natural transition than like seeing features on your screen and trying to make a decision based on like a list of things. People just try and avoid things because I think they're scared to say things straight up. One red flag and you're kind of like, oh, I can go find somewhere else. You don't need to have one person when you could have like five. Honestly, I don't know. I've had really bad luck. <laughs> so everything. <laughs> like, I've been treated like shit. I think a big part of it is because of social media. People see a lot. They expose to a lot. They're always looking for better, 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 better. Everyone is always looking for the best thing and they always think something else is around the corner and you almost have too much access to too many people. What are some problems or frustrations that you have with today's dating world? I feel like people don't want to be in a relationship. Why do you get that feeling? There's just lots of options out there. All the apps where you can find whatever you want to find. Do you think that the fact that you have too many choices makes it a lot harder to appreciate what you could have? 100%. One red flag and you're kind of like, oh, I could go find somewhere else. Or there's multiple people on the go. You don't need to have one person when you could have five. What are some things that guys do that piss you off dating ones? Just be guys. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. I feel like guys don't think. I'm like, did you think about what you just said or did for two seconds. Mm. Give an example. No. It's the ideal way you want to be asked out. If a guy just walked up to me in a bar, I'd be like, this is creepy. I'm not giving you my number. But then also you're like, oh, online. There needs to be like a happy medium. Like yeah. I want to meet somebody through like a friend of a friend. If you could offer some solutions on how someone could better date or find love, what would you say? I think the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So work with what you have. If you found a person, figure it out. But also know when to leave because mm. some people get too comfortable and stay. You need to know when to leave. Nearly half of unmarried women, 45% to be exact, will not have had a boyfriend by 2030. That is the dire forecast based on 2019 tendencies that Morgan Stanley identified. A startling proportion of prime working age women in the United States are choosing to forego relationships completely in favor of dedicating themselves fully to their jobs as the number of these women continues to rise. Yes, they are increasing wages and stimulating the economy, but at what cost? According to economist Ellen Zentner, motherhood, or the lack of it, now plays a major role in the income disparity, whereas in the past it was solely related to education or professional choices. Motherhood causes many women to reduce their job or leave the workforce entirely, which lowers their income. However, while the gap may close as fewer women choose to become mothers, the number of households will also decline. The forecast indicates that the percentage of unmarried childless women in the 25 to 44 age group would rise sharply from 41% in 2024 to 45% in 2030. For those who believe this to be a passing fad, it is anticipated that the trend will continue to rise at a rate of 1.2% per year. We are moving toward a future where more women choose advancing in their careers over starting babies, so get ready for that. According to Zentner, these changing lifestyle patterns are enabling more women to work full-time with or without children, which should continue to raise the labor force participation rate among single females. Let us ignore the economic spin, though. Compared to typical family households, single women spend more money on vacation, nightlife, dining out, skincare products, and retail therapy. It goes without saying that economists will spin this as a positive trend since well, it helps the economy. Growth is correlated with increased spending. But what is the true price in this case? It is possible that the economy is growing, but society is suffering as a result. The birth rate is already falling below replacement levels, and studies indicate that single, childless women are more vulnerable to problems with their mental health and self-esteem. Therefore, even though these women appear to be having a great time in the mall or visiting the newest hot location, there may be a more serious problem at hand. It is truly distressing to see the nuclear family, which is the foundation of any robust society, erode.
less households equate to fewer children, fewer contented marriages, and a less hopeful future. These so-called prime working age women are, in the meantime, sacrificing their finest years to careers and employers who do not give a damn, having careless sex that undermines their mental health and missing out on the genuine lifetime fulfillment that comes with becoming a wife and mother. Indeed, the economy appears to be flourishing. But at what expense? It is very... So I'll ask the question, what do you think men want in women? I think that the masculine realm that we operate in is based on respect. I think that men are constantly looking for a way to be respected. I think the world is hyper competitive and we're constantly always looking for status amongst our peers. This is why you will see a man give up his basically entire life to do something which will only gain him respect, even in a very small sphere. So if I had to build the ideal woman who could get any man on earth, what she would have to do is understand that I need to give my man as much status and as much respect as possible. I, by extension of him, being next to him, need to make him look respected. But the hidden actual message behind all of it is that men are constantly looking for status and respect. And a woman who makes her man feel respected not only from her, but from his peers, it's the kind of woman a man's never going to want to lose. It was something that actually really scared me. It was something I was super ashamed of, super embarrassed by. I felt really left out. I just thought I was like one of the only people because I was around a lot of people that were in relationships or who were already married and way ahead of me on that timeline and i was scared that it was never gonna happen for me i have dated i have been in situationships with men but i've never met someone who i feel like i would want to spend a long period of my life with like who i would want to be in a relationship with and this was something that in my early 20s, I actually just never saw myself falling in love or being in a relationship. I always just thought like I would be the person who would never be in love and love was stupid. And I think ultimately it was just a way to avoid getting hurt. I definitely have been in toxic situations where I've pr been treated really poorly by men and just used in... I think you could put two and two together for situationships in your early 20s. So like the previous woman. I've never been on even like two dates with the same person. Like you had many encounters of men just having their fun with you, running, <laughs> one could say running through you, having their fun, but no commitment. And like she says, she didn't think any of them were even worthy to even be with. Dusty. <coughs> interesting how much does feminism have to do with these women not having a solid boyfriend i mean we've noticed a pattern already haven't we the pattern of yeah many interactions and a lot of fun because feminism has taught women that's good just be liberated have your fun some women reach a point where they realize well don't i deserve something more and all they have is themselves and probably some pets and i think it really did mess me up and it wasn't until i really started doing a lot of therapy around my mental illnesses that I learned kind of the impact those relationships, not relationships, situationships had on me overall. And so when I say I've never had a boyfriend, it used to be something that I was super, super ashamed of because I just figured at this point in my life, 30, I would definitely be in a situation or be at least close to like getting married having kids living with someone like all those things it's like even if men don't say anything women themselves say by 30 okay but they're not i want to share a little bit about why i think that's okay and why i'm coming to terms with where i'm at in my life is where exactly where i'm supposed to be even though at times i find it really hard i still believe that everything will work out how it's supposed to and I'm just trying to have more faith that the universe will guide me wherever I need to go. But I truly did believe that by now, I would be in love and would have found my person. And I think it's very depressing to observe how feminism has led 
women to believe in a false ideal that frequently leaves them feeling more alone and unfulfilled than when they started. Many women have been persuaded by the contemporary feminist narrative that achieving sexual liberty, independence, and professional success are necessary for their value. Nevertheless, in practice, these goals frequently leave them feeling hollow and unfulfilled. In its attempt to break free from the alleged constraints of traditional gender roles, feminism has abandoned the very things that provide many women great and enduring happiness, motherhood, family, and meaningful relationships. The idea that being a wife and mother is somehow a lesser vocation and should be shunned in favor of chasing transient pleasures or moving up the corporate ladder has been promoted by the movement. Women are often told they can have it all, a successful profession, independence, and a happy personal life. However, the reality is that many of them wind up compromising one for the other. The ideal of having it all frequently devolves into a nightmare of excessive effort, isolation, and lost chances for real human connection. Feminism's purported independence frequently entails tying women down to an unrelenting quest of achievement, which leaves them demoralized and exhausted. The most disheartening aspect is, is that a lot of women do not recognize the consequences of this delusion until it is too late. The chance for those things may have passed them by by the time they realize that having a successful career does not provide you the same deep sense of satisfaction as raising a family or a hug at night. I want a boyfriend, but I don't feel like dating. Does that make sense? Yes. No, it doesn't make sense. Listen, yeah. okay. Oh, I, yeah, I was like, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, listen, I want to be in a relationship, snap my finger right now, yeah. he's next to me. But I don't feel like, it, nor do I want to spend the energy dating, dating texting, so. playing it cool, looking perfect, because that's like three months of just consistent yeah. Trying to make someone because, like, like you. It's like really exhausting. It's a go lot. On so many dates, and then you have to decide when you can, you know, take the next step. And okay, then... maybe this is only for us, and Chris can't <laughs> understand. So because, do you know how long it takes us to get ready for a date? Probably a while, yeah. A very long time. It's exhausting. Yeah. So I'm just like, it's a lot of effort for us. This concludes our A4 anonymous coverage for the day. Click that like button, please. Make sure you hit that notification bell in addition to subscribing. Leave a comment telling us what you think. Have a great day tomorrow.